Wire Forest here in Worcestershire was once an area renowned for big traditional orchards like this one, but today many of them sadly are neglected and derelict. The Grow With Wire project aims to reinvigorate orchards like this. The Grow With Wire project supported the restoration of 35 of these orchards. As well as planting new trees, we are actually working hard to restore some of the old ones. And this means taking off some of the wood that otherwise would cause the tree to split open and die prematurely. And this is what Richard in the background is doing. Managing these old orchards is largely a case of restorative pruning. Trees like this over time have gotten very large and top heavy. Therefore, the biggest threat to them is their own weight. From a management point of view, we need to reduce the size of them progressively. So using a pole saw like this, I'd look to reduce the weight of this tree by taking off several of the upper limbs. Old orchards such as this are incredibly rich in wildlife. As the trees age, they develop all sorts of nooks and crannies, hollows and pockets for creepy crawlies, birds and small mammals. Unlike woodlands, which can be extremely ancient, most orchards aren't actually old features of the landscape. The orchards here in Wire largely date from the 1870s onwards. And the reason for that is that the railway came to Bewdley in 1860. This enabled fruit to be grown on a large scale in this area. It could be picked in the morning, put on the train at lunchtime, and be up for sale in Birmingham and the Black Country the following morning. Behind me is an old plum orchard, which has been restocked with young trees to keep it going. So we've got a mixture of old trees and young trees here with the traditional sheep grazing beneath. And at this point, it's worth making a distinction about pruning and management. We prune apples and pears in the winter, but we prune the stone fruit, plums, cherries and damsons in the summer. This is due to a disease called silver leaf, which is extremely prevalent in this area. And for that reason, we have to prune them in the summer when the sap is up. In restoring these orchards, it's important to establish the next generation of young trees. Here we've got a nice example of a young fruit tree that's been pruned in the classic wine glass or goblet shape. We're looking to achieve a tree that's had the middle taken out and has given us a nice bowl-like structure of branches. The obvious question that arises is why do we prune trees at all? After all, a wild fruit tree will produce fruit without any human intervention. Well, there are several reasons why we prune. Firstly, we prune to get better quality fruit. Secondly, we prune to let light and air into the tree. We want sunlight in the tree to ripen the fruit. We want the wind to flush out any spores or potential disease. Thirdly, we might prune to contain the size of a tree, to keep it a certain size. And fourthly, we prune to take out any damage or diseased wood. Tools of the trade then, fairly simple, saws and secateurs. Saws come in two types, folding, a bit like a pen knife, and the scabbarded type. For a taller tree, you might need a saw and a stick, a good pair of hand secateurs, loppers, essentially long handled secateurs, and for taller trees, again, a pole pruner. This is a classic example of an unmanaged tree. What we've got here is far too much growth. It's basically congested. And what we don't like to see in fruit trees is all this crossing and rubbing. This leads to bark damage, and then disease can get into the tree. So what we need to do is to thin it out. We want to remove all these crossing and rubbing pieces. So where they come up from underneath like this, we favour the branch above because that's the one that will get the sunlight. So I'm going to take this out completely. There's another one coming in there. I'm going to shorten that back to a bud. Well, here's a good example where the two branches have crossed and rubbed against each other, so damaging the bark on this one. So what I'd look to do is remove the lower branch thus freeing that one up. What we're looking to do is to let light and air into the tree. It's the sunlight that gets in and ripens the fruit and the wind will flush out any fungal spores and disease. What we want is a nice, light, open, airy tree. We don't want a congested, overcrowded tree. There are two types of bud on a fruit tree and it's important to be able to tell the difference. These are fruit buds, the pointy ones that sit out on little stems and all what these will produce is the blossom and the fruit next year. The other types of bud on a fruit tree are the growth buds, 
and these are just the little tiny pointed ones that lay flat against the stem and all they will produce is more leaves and branches. So when pruning the tree, if we want to favour fruit production, we look to reduce the growth buds and favour the fruit buds. If however we want the tree to get larger, we might favour the growth buds and thin out some of the fruit buds. When pruning the vegetative growth, that's the amount it grew last year, and this piece grew maybe eight or nine inches, we'd look to prune it back to an outward facing bud. That will throw next year's growth away from the centre of the tree and give us that wine glass or goblet shaped tree that we're after. So on this I'd come down maybe halfway or two thirds to say that outward facing bud there. Here's a particularly bad example of canker so we look to prune that out. Canker is a fungal disease that gets into the bark and causes these unsightly distortions. It affects the flow of sap up through the branch and therefore reduces the amount of sap getting to the upper part of the branch. We want to minimise the amount of disease in the tree, so I'm going to take this piece out altogether. This is an example of a neglected tree, and it doesn't really need to be like that. Pruning, for some reason, has developed an aura of being mysterious, tricky and difficult, when in fact a few simple rules, and little and often. The trick with pruning is a bit every year, and the key is to never take more than about a third of the tree in any one pruning. Having restored the orchards, there's a range of uses we can put the fruit to. Here we've got cider and perry being made on the farm out of local fruit. It's not too bad, try some of that. Let's have a drop of that. Very good. Grown on the farm, made on the farm in the wire forest. Thank you.